My pleasure. Cool. We're gonna get right into it. Um, George, what are a few? What's one baseball-related lesson you learned early on that kind of led to your success throughout your career? Well, the main thing is that the muscle memory. You got to do it again and again and again. It's not gonna happen overnight. That muscle memory, after a while, becomes second nature to you. But pra nobody talk about. It. What's the three most important things about uh, the game? I said practice, practice, practice. And some say practice make perfect, but I said practice make you better. Yeah. Now, did you have one drill that you would uh, go back to that you really enjoyed? Well, mostly at the dentist I have one drill. No. <laughs> the one drill is the top hand drill. The top hand drill and the bottom hand drill. It's important to keep your hands strong. And in addition to that, squeezing a tennis ball or a rubber ball to make your fingers, your hands, and forearms strong, those are the parts of your body you're going to use a lot in swinging a baseball bat and a lot of a lot of kids I always ask them to do a lot of push-ups and that's going to help keep their fingers their hands their forearms or their uh, back muscles deltoids and everything strong and you want to stay lean and you don't want to bulk up too much you want to keep your muscles long and strong so you're talking about the short bat so well, with the top well hand in the beginning I used the short bat but I now I advocate uh, using their own bat but choke up on it because I wanted okay. to get the same feel. If they use a smaller bat and then they go to their bat, what happens now to hit is a diff different feel. So use their own bat and just choke up on it for, Good. for bat control. Well, what's the best piece of hitting advice that you've ever heard? The best piece is don't get hit in the head, no. The best piece of hitting advice is use, using the middle of the field. A lot of kids try to pull the ball or just hit the ball down the line, but use the middle of the field, left center, right center. And that way you can you enhance your chances of getting your base hit. Great. Um, you've had a lot of great highlights throughout your career. And <laughs> How you doing, sir? Oh, that's I'm sorry. all right. Come on. Hi. Hi. I just want to shake your hand, sir. <laughs> you know, the last person that did that? Yes. In his chair, we got, she knocked him out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll find you. See that? I'm stepping on <laughs> left hand. You better be glad you're on the right side. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, best piece of hitting advice. What the best piece of hitting advice is, say, is uh, yeah. make sure that. Uh, Using top hand, bottom hand, just swing the bat, but use your own bat. Make sure to use your own bat and choke up for bat control. And a lot of times using smaller bats, it's okay, but I, I just want you to use your own bat so you can keep that same feel. That's great. And so your MVP of the league, led the league in home runs uh, twice, I believe. <laughs> oh, yeah, time. twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> Three times RBI. Three times RBI. What would, I mean, you had so many great accomplishments. What's one thing that kind of stuck out in your, sticks out in your mind when you look back on that, that you're proud of? Hitting for a high average. I not only hit for power, but I hit for average. So now, now you become a team player as such. So you get on base, you drive in runs, you get on base. So being able to hit 320, you're going to be more of a, you can drive in runs, not only hitting the home runs, but you get a base hit to drive in. I, I think I had 197 hits that particular year. Of course, 52 of them were home runs. But the other times were singles, doubles, not a lot of triples, and I want to stop at second base. And I, did, I wasn't known to slide a lot because the clubhouse guy wanted to make sure that I keep the uniform clean. But other than that, uh, I was out there. I was a team player. Yeah. Now, as a power hitter, is there, um, like, would you guess pitches, or what was your philosophy when it was in the box? I went to college and I never did guess. I learned to anticipate. So for me, I look middle in. Uh, it's a power hitter, middle in. Uh, and other singles hitters, they can maybe have more play coverage because they're looking to not really dry the ball as much. But I just advocate look middle in, then it didn't look fastball all the time and adjust to the rest. That's great. Um, what uh, what do you feel separates a good from a great baseball player? Uh, being consistent. So if you say get three, hit, look up every ten times at bat, try to get a good pitch to hit and drive and hit hard. And it's almost guaranteed you're going to get at least three hits. So being able to get, say, 2.8 hits uh, for every 10 at bat, that's going to put you up to the, the, the elite. Uh, some guys just complacent because they're, yeah. it's their turn to bat. But you got to go up there and have an idea what you want to do. <laughs> and Pete Rose had said that make sure that you don't give up on that bat. Every at bat counts. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see him play firsthand. Oh, yeah. I taught him everything he knows. And 
to this day, he doesn't give me any credit for it, so I just have to speak out for myself. <laughs> we'll get that out to the masses. <laughs> yes. People need know. to know. Let them know. <laughs> Such on the mental side of, the, of hitting, which is a huge part. What what was your mindset stepping into the batter's box? I was scared. Nobody was there but me. No. They having a confidence, believing that you can do it. But you gotta have an idea what you want to do before you get into the batter's box. Being disciplined, like I said earlier, look for a pitch middle end, knowing what he that pitcher does have, knowing what pitch he tried to get you out before, and using the middle of the field. Uh, get a good pitch to hit and be aggressive up there and feeling that you're better than whoever's out there on the mound. I never did feel that a pitcher got me out, I felt I got myself out. So what is it that I need to do to make that adjustment? See, if I didn't get a hit that particular time, the next time up, I guarantee you I will get a hit because I'm focused on what I need to, to do to incorporate my, my next at bat. Was there one pitcher in particular that gave you fits and you just hated the face? Not really, it's just guys that you didn't like to face a lot, a guy named J.R. Richards or Nolan Ryan. You see, the thing is, is that if you made the, the if you struck out, you want to be the third out so you can go out to the outfield compared to walking back to the dugout. Because now fans are like, yeah, yeah, he's going to strike you out again. But uh, you don't want to walk back with your bat, you know, to the dugout. At least you go out to the outfield and think about it for a while. But J.R. Richards and Nolan Ryan, those guys are, they had a good slider, a good fastball, so you really have to be ready for those guys day in and day out. Yeah. So currently you have, uh, you, you run combat baseball camps? Well, I do boot camps. Boot uh, camps. It's, it's baseball boot camp. It's involving, we have a friend that had served in Iraq and he talked about the principles of uh, being, a mil being a soldier. And I give the fundamentals or the, the uh, basis of being baseball. But I just feel that to be a, a soldier, there's a lot of discipline that you need to take place to make sure that they, you know, stay alive. And then in baseball, it's just certain things you want to do to help you become a better baseball player. And I mean, we, we go to the, to the site, we take the camp to wherever the people, we have a hundred or more kids to be able to do that particular camp. Uh, they usually start at the age of eight on up to average 18, 15 or so to work with the fundamentals of playing the baseball game of baseball. Great. And you guys will go to different cities wherever the, wherever the, the need is or wherever people contact Right. From. Whenever people get have a hundred or more kids and they have the site, uh, we'll go there. Right now we're looking for a call from a Hawaii. We, we're looking to go there. <laughs> Put that on our agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Final question. Um, what's one piece of advice you give aspiring baseball players out there looking to take their game to the next level? Well, no, well one part is finding out the Find out the reputation of that instructor. Don't just uh, find out what, what that instructor is good at. If he's good in hitting or pitching, what, what aspect is he, that's what is, what is his forte. And then once you learn a certain aspect, don't just uh, go home and not do anything, practice that. If you want to get better, you got to practice whatever you learn and do it day in and day out. And it usually takes 21 days to learn a new muscle memory, but if you work out, you can cut that down. But if you but learning that, knowing that at least 21 days, you got to go out there and dedicate yourself to learn that new muscle memory. And if you want to continue to get better, don't get complacent. Always keep working at it. That's great. Thanks so much for your time. Arigato, to the Ah, the Japanese coming out. <laughs> it is time for. Here, throw this baseball up. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want the background music? I think it's kind of nice.